Hi and welcome to Dunfermline. This is my hometown, a um, little town of Dunfermline in Scotland, which was once the capital of Scotland about 400 years ago. And today I'm going to show you the sights and the, the favourite parts of this. Now we're starting today in what's affectionately known as the Glen, otherwise known as Pitt and Creef Park, which is um, the very large public park in the middle of Dunfermline that was donated um, to the town by one of its favourite sons, Andrew Carnegie, who you may have heard of. We're starting right in the middle of the park here. This is the Peacock Rooms uh, and this is the cafe. Uh, there's a kids play area, there's a coffee shop here and this is where lots of locals come to have a cup of tea, a cake, hang out with their friends, which is what we just did, and little ones can play. Now we're going to show some things around the park. It's a very large park and it's very loved and used by all the locals. And over here, this sort of pans out uh, to the main field area. This is where we have lots of festivals, local galas, um, the Bruce Festival in the summer, which celebrates uh, Robert the Bruce and all things historic. Um, this is all happening out here. And so this is where everything gets set up. We have medieval festivals, there's uh, food festivals, lots of different things all throughout the summer um, when it's sunnier. And normally, when it's a bit clearer, you can see all the way over to the Firth of Forth here, the river that goes over to Edinburgh, and you can see the bridges here as well. Now there's even a museum right in the middle of the park. This is called Pitt and Creef House and this is where we've got a museum about all things Dunfermline, about the history of the place, of the different people like Malcolm Canmore, um, original king, of, well, one of the kings of Scotland when it, um, Dunfermline was the capital. The information about him, about the history, about everything here as well as they have exhibitions that come and go about local artists and crafts and things like that. Now next to the museum we've got the gardens and it's still a little bit early in the year at the moment, so there's not that many things flowering yet, but there will be soon. And so this is a lovely garden area that's very nice to walk around. Loads of roses here in the summer, it's beautiful. And right behind, we've got the greenhouse with the botanic gardens, which are inside. We've got lots of different flowers, lots of different plants and cactus. This is the Glen Pavilion, the other side from the cafe. This is the whole thing. We've got an outdoor mini amphitheatre here where they have um, some concerts in the summer. There's a lot of community activities here like Kayleys, there's different events, arts and crafts things, parties, and the annual um, spring flower show um, where kids from local schools will grow flowers at home and bring them in and show them off, which is what I used to do as a kid. Um, so that's the pavilion. Coming further around, continuing the family theme, we've got play parks, this one here. The one down there is getting rebuilt and so it's a very popular place with families to come and just hang out or dog walkers. Something else to see walking around the park is we've got an old steam engine here, we've got an old um, train the kids can play on um, and there are some playing in it right now and it's a fun thing to see as you walk around. Now here right in the middle of Pitt and Creef Park is the statue of probably Dunfermline's most famous son and this is the, uh, the steel tycoon Andrew Carnegie. Uh, he was born in Dunfermline, raised here. We've got a museum about his birthplace. And he basically, once he made his money um, in the steel industry, he spent a lot of it um, helping a lot of different places around the world. He set up lots of different, hundreds of libraries. Um, and the first one he set up was here in Dunfermline, which we'll see later. And also he, to, to the town here, he gifted this park. He gifted the library. He gifted uh, swimming baths. He gifted um, lots of different buildings. And he did a lot of good. So because of that, to say thank you, Dunfermline has a statue in his honour, right in the middle of the park. And then over here, you can see from Pitt and Creef Park, this takes you to the bottom of the high street. It's a very cute old fashioned high street. And on the right here, we can see the city chambers. And this is the, the pretty building with the clock. And this goes up the street. We've got lots of uh, local shops as well as high street brands. There's little local businesses as well, pubs, cafes, coffees. Uh, coffee shops and, and bars as well. So we'll have a look at that in a bit. So walking from over at the cafe area and where the park is, come straight down here towards the main bridge and this is where loads of the action happens. Now down here we've got this nice bridge you can walk over and down here we've got a Japanese garden and there's a bandstand here which is very cute and romantic. But there's a small river running through it or a burn as we say in Scotland. Um, you can do walks all the way down through this, it takes ages, you can go right in the middle of the, this sort of mini forest here, so you're right in the middle of town, but it feels like you're in the countryside. Uh, it's very nice. Over the other side of the bridge here, we can see there's some nice blossoming trees, and this is of course the Pitt and Creef Museum over here, the big yellow building that we saw earlier. And you can walk straight up the bridge here, and through here, um, we've got King Malcolm's Tower up to the left, and we go straight all the way through to Dunfermline Abbey. 
Now this is where Dunfermline began. This is Malcolm Canmore's tower. And uh, now King Malcolm ruled uh, for 35 years as King of Scotland um, from 1058. And this was his tower. Now, the motto of Dunfermline is Esto Rupus in Excessa, which means in Latin, um, the rock from the inaccessible place, which is referring to the tower. Now this was built first, basically, and the, the town came about all around it. Uh, because you had, from here, you had a view of the river. It was a great place, strategically, to check out enemies coming in the river, um, and a good part um, to defend the place from. Uh, now, King Malcolm um, basically was the King of Scotland at the time, which made Dunfermline the de facto capital because the King was ruling here and this is where he was. So this is where it began. Now it's not that much to look at, but it's nice to check it out while you're in the Glen and see a little bit of the history. Now, um, some of the Glen's most famous inhabitants are these little guys and those are the grey squirrels. They used to be red squirrels, but the grey squirrels, like everywhere else, were bullies, they took their lunch money and they kicked them out. But now we do have these little grey squirrels and if you want to make closer friends with them all you have to do is bring some food, some bread, some nuts, like I've got anything like that. And they're very tame. Look at this. And they're very cute. So they're fish -fish. So as you come down from Malcolm Canmore's tower and past the squirrels, um, you can see there's a sign here that tells you all the things that are in uh, Pitt and Creek Park. We've got, uh, coming out, we've got the Abbey and Palace, the Carnegie Birthplace Museum, Abbott House, the Dunfermline Library, which we're heading to all of them next. Um, we've got St. Catherine's Chapel, and then further down back in the park, um, where we've just come from, there's Malcolm Canmore's tower, the Glen Pavilion, Pitt and Creek House, and the toilets. And there's a little sign here, just to remind you, we haven't seen any today, now, as well as the squirrels, another um, uh, wildlife um, that makes a big feature in the park here are the peacocks. Now, the royal regal peacocks are here in Dunfermline because Dunfermline is a royal borough. And so all the old royal boroughs used to have peacocks. Uh, basically, they live in the, in the glen. They have their own very cushy home, but they're also free to run around and roam around. And if you're walking around the, the glen or indeed the, the town itself, you will sometimes see the peacocks walking around. Now they do have the, the keys to the city, not actual keys, but it means they're a protected bird and they're kind of revered and they're like the, the town mascot. And they, you're not allowed to touch them, you're not allowed to hurt them, you're not allowed to even pull their tails, which children obviously like to do for the feathers, but nope. And they kind of know this. So you might see them if you're walking around the town, don't be surprised if you see one walking right across the street, but more, more often than not, you will find them as you're walking around the glen as they go for a stroll. Now at the gates to the Pidden Creek Park, here we've got the history and heritage. It tells you about all the things that we've stopped at, a little map telling you where everything is and where you can find things. Now as you come out here, this is one of the main attractions of Dunfermline in the historic quarter. This is a Dunfermline Abbey. Now this is a beautiful old building dating back to the 1200s. We've got the Abbey here, the nave, 
um, and we've got the palace beside it. And now this is actually where King Robert the Bruce, the most famous king of Scotland, um, who led Scotland to victory in the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, he is actually buried here. And so as we go around, we'll see his name is up um, at the top on the other side of the abbey as well. So this is the abbey. We've got the graveyard next to it. And over here is the Dunfermline Palace. So this is the Dunfermline Abbey Nave and Palace. You can go in. It's part of Historic Scotland Heritage Sites. Um, five pounds for adults. Um, it's open throughout the year um, most of the time. You can go in and have a look. And also the abbey is used for a lot of concerts throughout the years. Um, I used to do concerts too. But... So this is a Dunfermline Palace, or what there was of it. This is open on certain days, not all around the year. Um, a lot of it's gone now, but you can still see, when you go further in, you can see where the Great Hall was, the Banquet Room, uh, the Vomitarium, of course. And this is basically where King Malcolm lived. This was the seat of power for Scotland while he was in power and while he was the King of Scotland. And this pans around, and it's right next to the Abbey. Now, the Abbey Palace and Gatehouse, you can go into over here. This is where you go in and grab tickets. And then you can also walk around, whether you go in or not, you can walk around the graveyard here. And you can see up at the top of the abbey, it says King Robert the Bruce, all the way around the top here, showing the historical connection with him. So just outside the abbey, um, we've got more information. There's a lot of information in the historic uh, quarter of Dunfermline. And so right here, it tells you about um, Dunfermline, the ancient capital of Fife. And it basically, all the things that we've been looking at today um, around in the Glen, there's Pitt and Grief House, Andrew Carnegie Memorial, Memorial Carnegie Trust, which we're going to next. Um, and then we've got the Glen Pavilion, King Malcolm's Tower, uh, St. Margaret's Cave, the City Chambers, and the Royal Palace. And there's a map to tell you where everything is. So it's all very close by each other, and it's very easy to walk from one site to the other. You can get uh, between everything in about an hour or so. Now, as you come down the hill from the Abbey, this is the Andrew Carnegie Birthplace Museum. Now, it started in this little um, house here. This was his actual house where he was born. It says Andrew Carnegie, millionaire and philanthropist, and he was born in this cottage on November 25th in 1835. And since then, there's books and books about all the things he's done, and he's probably Dunfermline's fam most famous son, as I said. And this is a museum dedicated to his life, his work. It's got quite a bit bigger now, it's extended down here, and they have different um, exhibitions on throughout the years, uh, throughout the year. Um, things about Andrew Carnegie, about his work, about the effect that it had, as well as long lasting reach of the libraries he set up, and about um, industry and how he affected it, as well as different local exhibitions that will change throughout the years. Um, it's free, they have a nice coffee shop as well, Wi-Fi, and let's have a little peek. So this is inside um, Andrew Carnegie's birthplace museum, and this is where he was born. This is um, the old cottage, and we're going to go to the birthplace room, and over here we've got a loom, which is one of the main industries that was happening at the time. And so this is where he was born, this is where Andrew Carnegie's entire family lived at the time, so um, turning into the richest man in the world later on, he started from very humble beginnings. And this was where the family lived, this whole room was the whole family, and over here was where everybody slept. And over the other side, in the same cottage in the other room, that was occupied by a completely different family. Um, so very humble beginnings, but very nice and cosy. So we've got the old cottage there, we've got the small cafe, and there's some information, some leaflets, a uh, kids area, and it goes out to the garden as well. And the shop. And then in the museum area, we've got information about um, Carnegie's time in America, land and opportunity, industry and fortune, and uh, basically as his life went on and the different things that he did and how his career progressed. And in the middle, we've got photos. This is a local exhibition by local high school students. Very impressive photos. And so in the middle section, that's where we have um, the changing local exhibitions as well. And then this part are all the permanent ones that tell you all about Andrew Carnegie's life. And there's lots of interaction, interactive exhibitions too. And here's the man himself, more or less, sitting at his desk where he would work. And come up with all his plans and his ideas to change industry. And this section of the photos, this is all from Queen Anne High School, which was my high school. Very talented photographers there at the moment. 
So if you're hungry while well, you're in Dunfermline, my personal favorite place to go for lunch or dinner um, and eat is this place here. This is Cushy's. It's an Indian restaurant. Bring your own bottle. Very nice food, very nice curries, very nice service and nice decor. They're open for dinner, for lunch, and they do Indian tapas style stuff. And this is right across from the library on St. Margaret Street. So this is the Carnegie Library and this is the old part of the building to the front here. There's also a new part of it which is also a museum now. So we're going to take a look in the old section first. So we have the old side of the library on one side, the original one, and now it's also been opened recently as the Carnegie Museum as well. So as well as being a library, an extended one, um, it's also a museum, there's lots of really good exhibitions. And on the way in, you can see it's right in the heart of the Fremont's historic area. We've got the Abbey right here, which we're at already. There's a very nice garden outside over here, which you can take a closer look at. And then this pink building over here, we'll have a closer look at in a moment. This is Abbott House as well. So let's look inside. Now inside in the museum, there's different sections and it has information about the history of Dunfermline, um, old and more recent, including things like the rock band Nazareth, um, a famous rock band in the UK are from Dunfermline. And um, we've got lots of different historical and cultural things to see as well. So this is the original section of the library. And this is what I grew up with. And it moves into the new part. And so the museum section goes over um, three levels. Um, here you've got pop culture from the 50s onwards, lots of memorabilia, uh, things to tell you about the history, about the culture, about the people of Dunfermline. And also um, there's different exhibitions on items. Um, different things, different things about transport, as, all, as well as some of the famous people that came from Dunfermline, apart from Carnegie more recently, um, like rock musicians and also the singer Barbara Dixon. Now a new section that's in here is an art area which is called the Glasgow Boys and there's a lot of art by different Scottish artists in here um, from different eras. It's very interesting as well and this is up on the, the second level. And there's also a nice coffee shop. And this is Abbott House, uh, which was the house that the Abbott lived in, who tended the Abbey. And this pink historic house has a museum upstairs and a nice coffee shop downstairs. Um, but it's closed at the moment under a bit of restoration, um, but it has a nice little garden outside. And this is usually my favourite spot to come for a little bit of tea and cake and sit in the summer. And this is the front of Abbott House. Okay, Dunfermline is not short of pubs. There are a lot of pubs here and there's quite a lot of live music. Uh, these are two of the finest pubs. We've got the Creepy Wee Pub, which has got very creepy decor. And we've got the Old Inn. And these are haunts I used to go to when I was a little bit younger. And here is the city chambers of Dunfermline. Nice building. This is where the registrar's office is. You can get civilly married here. Um, all the, the legal stuff, the official stuff happens right here. Now heading out of Dunfermline, we've got the Kingsgate Shopping Centre. And this is on the high street. Quite a large shopping centre here. That as we leave, this is the original Carnegie Hall, Andrew Carnegie's uh, theatre that he built at Dunfermline. That's it from here. See you later.